Working on a big chunk of aluminum today. Bottom piece is half inch thick, top piece quarter inch thick. I'm using 1 8 5356 rod on a positioner and a 1 8 2% lanthanated electrode sharpened to kind of a blunt point. When I first lit up on this thing, I kind of noticed that I might like just a little bit more cleaning action. You can see a lot of stuff cooking out of that. This thing's been tacked up and sitting in my shop for months. So, I kind of bumped up the cleaning action a little bit to 35%. My amperage was set to about 225, 226. I didn't quite need it all. And my AC frequency was set to 175 to get a good punch in there, to get penetration into the root of the joint. They say the ABCs of welding are always be comfortable. I'm pretty comfortable here, pretty steady. If I was in business still and I had a thousand of these things to do, that would be gravy work. This is just for a video, but I think we can talk about a lot of things here, one of which is feeding the filler wire. See how I'm kind of pushing it in there with my thumb? That's just one of many ways, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But look at this puddle. Look at the root of the joint. Does it look like I'm punching in there? That's the question. I'm going to test it. We're going to find out. But the thing that I've found with aluminum is sometimes when you don't think you're quite getting penetration into the root, you actually are. I like to see the very front of that puddle really necking down, tear dropping right into that root. Sometimes it doesn't quite look like it is. And that's why I test things. I'm somewhere between 200 and 225 amps for this joint. I would say from the looks of it, it, it definitely doesn't look like it's cold. Looks like everything is blending in pretty nicely. But I got an arc shot coming up in just a second where I magnified it a little bit. And tell me what you think. Is that punching into the root? Or is it leaving lack of fusion? It, it, honestly, to me, it looks like it might not be quite hot enough. Problem is, if I go much hotter, that puddle's going to wander out and try to nip that corner. Don't really want that. I could have preheated it and probably made a lot of difference, but I just wanted to start off cold just to see if I could punch it in there without a preheat. All right, we're almost to wrap this thing up, and we're almost to the point where we're going to test it. And so at the end of this weld, I'm tapering amperage as I add a little bit of extra filler, move the arc around, swirl it, taper off amperage. I didn't catch that on camera, but that's a topic for another video. But it looks okay, but let's test it. I made a little stand for my Milwaukee Porta band recently. Things coming in so handy. To test a weld like this, you just need a fairly decent polish on it. You don't have to get a mirror finish, but the smoother the better. Easy off oven cleaner is caustic enough to etch aluminum. There are several other options, but that's an off-the-shelf option that works pretty good, as long as you get a good polish on it. And even when I get a good polish, Sometimes after I get it rinsed and dried off, I have to play the light on it to get it to show favorably to see what I want to see. But what I'm seeing there is I punched into that root. Here's something interesting for you. How you think you feed filler wire may not be how you actually feed filler wire. If someone were to ask me a year ago or so, how do I feed filler wire? I would have said like this. I pinch it between the first two fingers, alternately between my, my thumb, and I feed it with those two fingers. But when I put a camera on myself, I learned that I kind of do the opposite of that. So I'm gonna put some clips in right here of a previous video, TIG welding aluminum on a positioner where I'm feeding wire because I think that might help. I find it kind of interesting that I would tell somebody one way I feed rod and then when I put the camera on, I'm doing it kind of different. It's true that when that helmet drops, you're in a little bit of a, a different world. And I think that actually that's what a lot of us welders like is that we can zone out. When you're intensely focused on the puddle, you're not thinking about any problems or anything like that. You're just completely focused. But I think also you're not really aware of exactly what your hands are doing. Which is why, again, I think it's a good idea to film yourself and see what you are doing. This is just one of many methods you could use to feed TIG rod. There are lots of different ways. Just have to find something that works for you and then try to get better at it. This technique is working okay for me right here, but if I was welding vertical uphill on something, I would probably use a different method, prop my hand in a different way. But this method works good for me on a positioner like this where I'm all steady and propped up or flat on a bench where I'm just running a bead. This is a number seven cup. I'm using 2% lanthanated 
332 diameter electrode and you can see it's maintaining a taper pretty well. It's rounded on the tip a little bit but it's not completely balled up. If you've been watching me for very long at all you know I use 2% lanthanated for almost everything. I just feel like it's a easy way to keep things simple. It works. It's a good all-purpose electrode. Not necessarily the best for every single situation. It's just a good all-purpose electrode if you're constantly switching back between DC and AC. And I do. I switch back and forth because I make videos. I know I've said this many times before, but I started off using clear cups strictly for filming the arc. They light things up so much that it really helps me get a better arc shot. But I learned pretty quickly they help me see a lot better too. It's just kind of like a light bulb going along, lighting things up, and when you put a paint cup back on, it's kind of like somebody dims the lights a little bit. It's not a must-have, but it sure does help me with, with my 60-something-year-old eyes. Stubby gloves, these feel great. Feeding wire, 2% lanthanated Weldmonger tungsten. We've got lots of filler wire in stock. And in case you don't know, I created a TIG shortcut guide, Prime Weld Edition, that shows how to get the most out of the TIG 225 as well as the TIG 325. Free download, no strings attached. If you're ever in the market for a TIG welder, a Prime Weld is a good choice, and I've got them bundled with some nice kits for some savings.